Hi, welcome to my home and my in-home studio. We are standing front and center, right in my dining room. Front door right here. I've got glass doors right here. This was the most unlikely space for me to enjoy. Um, you know, I've worked all over my house. I have worked where I've had an exclusive bedroom just for me. I've worked upstairs in a weird little nook that I call the perch, where you can look out on both sides over a staircase and over a little balcony. It was never supposed to be a place to have anything. My husband built me a little desk that was this big. I worked there too. And now I'm here in my dining room. I have college age kids and they left and now they're all back temporarily and I needed a place to work. Uh, and so the only likely place was right here, smack in the middle of my house, <laughs> front and center. And so I came here with a lot of reluctance. I wasn't sure if I would like it. I felt like maybe I would be exposed. I didn't know if it would look super weird. Um, but I'll tell you what, this might be my favorite space ever. And I think that even after they leave, I don't think I'm going to be walking back into this bedroom and working. I love it in here. I think it is so pretty. It looks so usable and welcoming. Um, I don't feel exposed. I feel mm, like part of, part of the home and I'm kind of proud of, of where I work and what I do. So even, you know, thinking about the neighbors being able to see in, and sometimes it looks weird in here because I mean, it's really pretty right now, but you know, <laughs> it turns into a mess and I record classes. So I've got studio lights and cameras, and it looks crazy inside your dining room, but I love it. And so I think about, you know, my journey with making art and your journey with making art. I remember, um, I mean, it all started when I was in elementary school, sitting on my floor, cross-legged next to my bed. Those are some of my, of my fondest memories where I really started to build that relationship. That's how I see it, a relationship to my art practice. And then when I came into the mixed media world and found online art journaling classes, just like this one, and I started at the dining room table with an Ikea rolling cart, rolling cart and one set of watercolors and a journal. And that was it. And I loved it. So I think, you know, I guess I want to encourage you that no matter what your space is like, where you are, what phase of life you're in, that our art journey can change, where we create can change. We can get really creative with our spaces. Uh, sometimes we're gonna have more of an abundance of space and time. And sometimes it's gonna be really tight and small depending on where we are in life. And uh, there is always a way to make space and room for our creativity. You know, I teach classes, I teach them online and in person, and I remember um, I taught a class one time, and afterwards the girl said, oh my gosh, that felt like a spa, except for my brain. And someone else said, that felt like a spa, except for my soul. And then someone said, a spa for my creative soul. And that's where my classes were born. It's a spa for your creative soul. You know, I just think art is so amazing. I think of it as being like a friend. You know, if you were to personify your art practice, what would that friend, what would that person be like? I think for a lot of us, sometimes if it were a person, it would feel like, you know, it was in the corner, scowling with its arms crossed, thumping its foot and saying, where have you been? You have to come every day and someone's better than you. And can you imagine if that were a real person speaking like that to you? Um, you wouldn't want to spend much time with it. It wouldn't be something that warmed your heart and nurtured you and made you feel joy and healing like art can actually be. And so I think of that for myself as I've always sort of thought of my art as a friend, patient, loving, kind, cheerleading me on, always in my corner, right? And I often want to mother bear that and protect it, hold it safe and not let 
social media and the rest of the world in comparison and even my own inner critic get in the way of that relationship that I build with my art practice. And so I hope that encourages you as well to maybe think of your art practice in a little bit of a different way. Personify that art practice and ask yourself, if it were a friend, if it were a person, what would that feel like for me? It might feel like something different to you than it does for me. But I know that that is what has kept my um, creativity and making things feel free and open and I can hold on to curiosity in a way that is really helpful and nurturing to me. I've always loved that creative practice. I've seen it like a tool in the toolbox of life. And I think art is amazing for that. So I'm so happy to share it with you. I'm happy you are in my studio. Today, we're gonna do something cool. I'm gonna take you to the beach at sunset. It is my favorite, favorite thing. I don't know, art or beach sunsets. Which one do I have to choose? <laughs> I love them both. It's always been a dream of mine to live at the beach, and now I finally do. And it never ceases, just like art. It doesn't matter how many times I make art. It doesn't matter how many times I go to the beach. Every time it feels so good and nurturing to my soul. So we're gonna go to the beach. I'm gonna tell you how I bring my creativity to the beach. I'm gonna take you there. We're gonna watch a sunset. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for joining me. My name is Shay from Shay Michelle Studios, and I'm so happy to be here with you. Ready? Okay, we made it to the beach. We did our whole work day. It's the end of the day. We got our feet in the sand, the breeze. I can hear the ocean waves and the birds. It's my favorite place, the studio and the sand, the studio and the beach. I love to come to the beach and play a fun little game, okay? I didn't know before I lived here that the sunset is different every night. What happened last night is not what's happening tonight. So I come and I play this little game. What color would it be? What color would that shadow be? What color would the sun be? And I figure out, would that be Payne's gray? Would that be magenta? I don't really go home and paint it. <laughs> it's just a little game that I play in my head. And my husband always asks me, what color would you make that? My husband is a, hot, is a kiter. I don't know if you've ever seen that before, but it's where if you look out on the water and you see those big, beautiful kites with people attached to it, it's beautiful, but scary. <laughs> Gary, if you're the wife. <laughs> um, he loves to kite, but it's really windy. And when it's that windy, I don't want to be out on the beach. So I make myself a little art cockpit in the car. I bring my art travel kit, my watercolors, my journal. I listen to podcasts and I sit there and I watch him kiteboard and create. I love that creativity can come with us everywhere. It lives inside of us. We don't need much to do it. It's soothing and nurturing. It's like our friend, right? Like a loving friend, like we talked about earlier. It's been a great part of my life and doing stuff like this is, a, is such a fun thing in community that we get to share art and creativity with each other. So I'm so glad you journeyed with me here today. I wish you well on your creative journey, building your relationship with your art practice. All right, take care, I'll see you soon, bye.